How's it going you guys? So with the US Olympic Marathon Trials and the new World Athletics shoe prototype and availability rules, it's a very interesting time to be a running shoe manufacturer or even a customer. So pretty much every company is rushing to release their Vaporfly Killer so that their athletes would have a fair advantage against Nike athletes wearing the Vaporfly Next Percent or the Alpha Fly Next Percent. So many people are calling this an arms race against Nike to release high cushion carbon plated racing shoes for the marathon and it actually kind of seems that way. Companies are pushing up their release dates sometimes by six months just in order to get shoes on their feet of their athletes and comply with these new rules by World Athletics. So, since almost every running shoe company is entering this arms race, I thought we might as well go through all of them and see what they're bringing to the table. So let's make our way down the alphabet and start with Adidas. So Adidas has their Adi Zero Pro. It uses a mixture of boost and light strike foam and of course a carbon plate. It has a thin mesh upper and continental rubber on the forefoot. The weekend warrior version of the shoe is the SL20. This only has light strike in the midsole, so no boost or plate. It also has a more traditional up-tempo trainer type upper and outsole, kind of similar to what you'd find on the Boston Boost. Next up is ASICS. So they haven't officially announced their new shoe yet as they are planning for a summer release, but some leaked pics and info we know that is called the Meta Racer. The Meta Racer have a visible carbon plate in the front half of the shoe, cutouts to cut down on some weight, and an unknown midsole material, but I'd guess it's probably some flight foam variant. The upper looks pretty standard for an A6 racing flat with some extra padding and structure in the heel. The commoner version of the shoe I'd say is the Evo Ride from A6 which has that rocker off the toe and it's an up-tempo trainer. I do have a first impressions video of the shoe so make sure you check that out. So Brooks is interesting. So they had a limited release the night before or the day of the Olympic Trials for the Hyperion Elite and the Hyperion Tempo. The Hyperion Elite is their Elite Racing Flat which comes in at $250, but many people that had got their hands on it were not very impressed. They said it was very firm, not super plush or bouncy, and the durability of the shoe was rumored to be around 50 to maybe 100 miles max, so that's a lot of money for not a lot of mileage. Plus, on the day of the trials, Brooks athletes raced in the Hyperion Elite 2, which Brooks said would be available just a couple months after they did a limited release of the first Hyperion Elite, and this is probably like a year earlier than Brooks would have liked to release it. So that hard firm midsole in the original Hyperion Elite was the DNA Burst midsole that wasn't very durable and people weren't a fan of. But the Hyperion Elite 2 uses Brooks DNA Flash midsole. DNA Flash is very similar to Skechers Hyper Burst midsole as it is nitrogen effused EVA. And it's actually what's found on the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. So the Hyperion Elite has not only that new DNA flash midsole, but it also has a carbon plate and a slightly tweaked design in the heel. So if you don't want to pay $250 for that elite level shoe, the Brooks Hyperion Tempo is a hundred dollars cheaper and it's a quicker trainer companion to the elite, which I have found it to be very light and has some nice bounce to it something that was definitely missing on the first Hyperion Elite. The Hyperion Tempo does not have a plate, but it's still very speedy and very light. So the Hoka athletes in the Olympic Marathon Trials were wearing the Hoka Rocket X. This shoe is a mix between the Carbon Rocket and the Carbon X. It has a Rincon-esque upper and a Profly X midsole, and of course a carbon plate. Unlike the Carbon X, the Rocket X has thin patches of rubber on the outsole for better traction and durability. It's different than the Carbon Rocket because it has a 5mm drop instead of a 1mm drop, but it's still only 7.4 ounces. 
I'm really excited for the Rocket X and I am very bummed that they did a super secret, super limited release the day of or the day after the trials. And that guy isn't going to be cheap, it's coming in at $200 as well. So for 20 bucks less than the Rocket X, Hoka does have the Carbon X which many people are familiar with and it's the even more cushioned Marathon and Above Racer. This has the even thicker Profi X midsole and a more pronounced rocker than what is found on the Rocket X. All right, on to a very talked about topic, Nike. So I made a whole separate video about Nike's new marathon shoes like the Alpha Fly Next Percent and the Tempo Next Percent. So check that out, but I'll just give you a quick summary. The Alpha Fly Next Percent is a controversial shoe that barely meets the 40 millimeter thickness maximum and it has a lot of Zumex foam. Along with the Zumex foam is the carbon plate and two Zoom AirPods in the forefoot. This guy comes in at $275, so almost that $300 mark, which I just find crazy. But anyways, the slightly cheaper version at $200 is the Tempo Next Percent. And this is kind of like the everyday trainer version of the Alpha Fly that replaces both the Peg Turbo and the Zoom Fly. It features Zoom X foam and React foam in the heel, and it also has those two AirPods in the forefoot. Next, let's talk about New Balance. So New Balance hasn't said too much about their Fuel Cell RX Elite, but that is their top of the line Elite version of their carbon plated racing flat. It has the same bouncy Fuel Cell midsole and carbon plate found in the TC, but a racier upper and outsole. The outsole of the RC Elite is similar to the rubber triangles found on their 5280 Rhodes flat and that provides traction without adding a lot of weight but it won't be as durable as the outsole on the TC. So speaking of the TC that stands for Training Companion, so New Balance has the Fuel Cell TC Training Companion and the Fuel Cell RC Elite which is the Race Companion. So the Fuel Cell TC is New Balance's $200 workout and race day shoe that's heavier than the RC Elite but it's also more suited for daily training than the RC Elite and is a bit more durable. So Saucony has announced their Endorphin line which covers three different shoes, three different price points and three different purposes but the version that the athletes wore at the US Marathon Olympic Trials was the Endorphin Pro. So the Endorphin Pro has a thick, lightweight midsole made out of Power Run PB. This is similar to Adidas Boost, but a lot lighter. So unlike all the other shoes we've been talking about that has a carbon fiber plate, the Endorphin Pro actually does not. Instead, it has a graphite polymer plate. So the tier down below the Endorphin Pro is the Endorphin Speed. This shoe has the same Power Run PB midsole as the Endorphin Pro, but has a nylon plate instead of the graphite polymer. This shoe will be less expensive and come in at $160 as the kind of workout day slash trainer companion. All right, we've been talking about a lot of companies here, but let's finish up with Skechers. So they have the Skechers Speed Elite, which is their Elite or Pro racing flat with a carbon plate. The midsole of course has a rocker and carbon plate which is the trend right now. It's made out of Skechers Hyperburst foam which is nitrogen infused EVA like what Brooks started using with their DNA flash midsole. This allows the Speed Elite to be super light and bouncy in fact, it's only 5.7 ounces. The Skechers Speed Elite is also the cheapest Elite shoe, coming in at only $180. The upper is thin and simple, and the outsole is just two patches of rubber. So for the same weight but $45 cheaper, you can get the Skechers GoMeb Speed 6 Hyper, which has hyperburst midsole as well, but a shorter stack height, more outsole rubber, and a similar upper. All right, so thanks for sticking with me, guys. That was a lot of shoes we talked about. As you can see, in 2020, 
every running shoe company is releasing a high cushioned carbon plated marathon racing shoe. Everything from the Elite Pro level $200 and above, crazy technology, innovative shoes, but also at that slightly cheaper PR Chaser Weekend Warrior running shoe geek level as well. So there are probably some companies or shoes I missed, but oh well, I feel like I covered the vast majority of them. And hey, now if you go and re-watch the US Olympic Marathon Trials, you'll know what the athletes are wearing on their feet. And you can also start saving up for these shoes because like I have mentioned before, they are very expensive. So that's it for this video, you guys. Thanks for watching. I have a lot of shoes coming up, like the Brooks Hyperion Tempo, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And as always, keep on running.